They are the driving force of life. The chemical cocktail that courses through the veins of every creature. Hormones are the rocket fuel of survival. They make wildlife its wildest. And every hour, a mini beast. This episode, the Meta Game. Who wins? Who loses? Who cheats? Every creature plays by its own rules when it comes to sex. Welcome to Sea Lion Heaven, here on Australia's southern breeding island, where the males keep their distance. For half the year, it can be all mums, all pups, part maternity ward, part preschool. Their pups are sure to have plenty of playmates. Because the females are all in sync to give birth around now. But someone's about to crash their baby shower. He's not stopping by to say hi to his kids. That's the last thing on his mind. It's party time for him. His idea of full play? It's called birth. That's the male's cue, because in just seven days, Mummy's going to be up for mating again. She's a hormone machine. No sooner is she recovering and starting to lactate when estrogen fires up her own. her weight, 250 kilos of burning love. But then she just wets his appetite. There are other females up and down this beach, and he wants them to himself. The more, the better. He wants to be the beach master. Any day now, one of these females could give birth and then be up for grabs by any male. The females are emitting a potent attractant called pheromones. The air is so thick with sex, the male can almost taste it. So can other males. They're lining up to take the beach by storm. The beach master can't afford to drop his guard. That means no eating, no relaxing. He's got to stay on the watch for other males 24-7 for almost six months straight. Being a beach master is a job for super sea lion. An 
when he's through beating back his rivals. His sweethearts aren't so easy on him either. Anyone in his path had better steer clear. Even the young pups. In the mating crush, one out of ten pups gets killed. turns a normal, mild-mannered sea lion into a raging sex machine. Nothing short of a wonder drug. Maybe the most potent on the planet. The beach master is high on testosterone. Like any hormone, testosterone is generated by a gland. It travels through the bloodstream, binds to cells, and makes wildlife act wild. It's the all-time original anabolic steroid. The cells that testosterone targets are the ones that make males males. As in bigger, more aggressive, sexier. In other words, it can bring out the worst in them. This dude, he smells terrible. And he's dripping urine down his legs. He could have what looks like green pus coming out of his penis. What better way to attract a male? He's grumpy. He's old. He likes being alone. A regular dream date. But a single male elephant doesn't want anyone feeling sorry for him. He's got a lot going for him. Most of all, those big feet. They're able to detect low frequencies we can't hear rumbling through the ground. Today, he's picking up a sound that's got his heart all a flutter. It's coming from across the African plains, almost a hundred kilometers away. The sweet nothings of a female in heat. She lives with the herd, a long way from the bull of her dreams. To spread the word, she sings her seismic love song. But then she's on the move. Drought is driving the herd in search of water. So the old male better stay in hot pursuit. He's gone from loner to Casanova. Long distance romances, they never work out. But the herd finally makes a pit stop on the Pachyderm Highway. When your nose is a straw, no one minds if you dribble. An elephant can drink 190 litres of water per day. Though some may have a different priority. No matter how thirsty you are, snorkeling comes first.
When the old male finally shows up, he's in for a surprise. It turns out he's not the only one who's heard the female's call of the wild. To win a heart, all 20 kilograms of a heart, he has to now take on his rival. Both males have a secret weapon. They may be pumped with 50 times more testosterone than usual. The old male wins the smackdown. Now, the romance begins. Testosterone also makes him emit that same flood of chemical signals, pheromones, through a gland in his temple, in a steady drip of urine, in a green goo that gums up his penis. What a hug. His pheromones are calibrated to tell it to the world just how good his genes are. The worse he smells, the older he is, the more desirable. Elephants have been around for more than five million years, and sex hormones Oh, they've been around almost a hundred times that long. They've made bodies bigger and badder with antlers, horns, tusks and tempers. So, how long have males been fighting? Forever. Males will always be males. Will they ever grow up? Maybe the moose can set a better example. How does he attract a mate? The right cologne. Just a splash. The American Northwest spreads far and wide. So does a moose's chances of finding a mate around here. How is he supposed to advertise his sex appeal? What else? Cover himself in soil, caked with his urine. Love is in the air. Mr. Big Bull is suddenly irresistible. His secret? The powerful aerosol of his pheromones. For Madam Moose, it's a hormonal wake-up call. His pheromones could trigger her egg production. But they also trigger a stinky outcome. Big Bull Scent has made a slew of wannabes aware, and they're all eager for their chance at romance. It's time for testosterone to kick in. Big Bull is battle ready. His antlers weigh 35 kilos and pack a pun that can kill the loser. Or at least give him a serious headache. And that special someone, the news of Big Bull's victory, sure is a turn on. But it'll have to be a speed date. 
she's only fertile for a day. That could be her strategy for being sure she gets her choice made and doesn't risk giving that other wannabe any second chances. Winning a mate can take a fight to the finish. Between bodies designed to beat each other to a pulp. Between two of the strongest males on earth. That is, two bugs. They may be small, but bugs still pack the same hormones, and that makes them just as feisty. Just one whiff of the tropical Australian air, and out of the woodwork they come. Male rhino beetles from far and wide. Their weapons, horns and hormones. Their cue, a female's pheromones. Time for the great beetle battle. He can lift 850 times his own weight. More than almost any creature on the planet. That's the same as a 90 kilo man lifting the space shuttle. Usually, the male with the biggest horns wins out and gives the competition the heave-ho. The last beetle standing has earned his passport to paternity and passed on his genes and makes the better mate. Beetle horns may not be your mate's idea of sex. Maybe she's not hot for antlers. Or turned on by tusks. That's all up to her hormones. The drive to have sex can shape a species body to the absolute extreme. That an instrument of sex could be almost two meters long would probably frighten most females. That it's a neck might come as little comfort. The answer, please. How do giraffes have sex? stud can score a date, he has to answer an important question. Why is having such a long neck worth it? To eat only off the high trees, right? Maybe not. The low shrubs are actually just as tempting for him. Giraffes like to munch on them just as much. But meantime, his long neck is a big pain in the neck. It's got a lot of disadvantages. It weighs almost 300 kilos. To fuel his brain up there on top of that neck, his blood pressure has to be as much as three times ours. And his heart has to weigh over 10 kilos. So then, what is the advantage for him? According to one theory, the answer is sex, because this is how he and his rivals spar. They neck.
The more aggression hormone the male's got, the stronger his neck, the better his chances of winning. And reproducing. It's the migraine approach to mating. But wait, there's more sex to those necks. How do you know your date is an issue? Use that neck buster. Bend down and get a whip of a new eye. Females are only available to mate two weeks out of the year. So he needs to get a bead on her pheromones fast. So fast, it'll make your head spin. Two long necks and a short date later. Giraffe Junior. Hormones decide how a body looks. They shape how a male behaves as well. When it comes to sex, every male has a dark secret. He's got no control over how he acts. It's all up to the hormones churning through his system. They can transform him from a lovable lizard into a monster. Maybe even a healer monster. This is a healer's idea of a good day. Nice guy. He consumes up to a third his weight in one sitting. And once he's done, he can last for months without eating. Call it healer binging. After a big meal, he has to somehow cope with a major metabolism spike and instead make his meal last. His tail, a third his length, shrinks while he slowly absorbs the fat he's got stored away in there. because it could be that a hormone kills his appetite. Dieters aren't the only ones who should be studying it. So should pro wrestlers. On cue, healer males snap out of their stupor and the reason they laid low comes out. Time for a showdown over who gets the dibs on the females. The match can last for hours. Headlocks and half Nelsons. World wrestling champions have got nothing on either's. Nothing shy of a hormone could do it. change a lazy lizard into a fighting machine. Raw aggression is one way hormones max out a male. But they can also work their mating magic to fit the species. They could get him supercharged with stealth cunning, even good taste. Every eligible bachelor knows it. The key to a bachelorette's heart. Home decorating. 
the dead group falls, this male goes for the artsy approach. It starts with a consuming desire. With sheer lust and a bunch of sticks. For the satin bowerbird of Australia, testosterone brings out the home body. He doesn't have to butt horns or bellow. Instead, he builds. He's building a lure. This is a chick magnet. But she's not falling for it. Not until he sweetens the pot. He knows that'll wow her. Her eyes are tuned to human-made objects and a choice stretch of the spectrum. Little surprise, it's the same color as him. Iridescent blue. The sight is intoxicating for the female, making her flush with arousal. But she's got a wandering eye and the bower belt next door has sure piqued her interest. The male knows just how to deal with that by trashing his rival spread. He's not his normal, neighborly self. He's under the influence of testosterone. Now his bower is the best around. The female even brings a little housewarming gift. Clearly, he's got superstar genes. The bird makes the bower, but then the bower also makes the bird. Every animal is the product of his environment. How he mates is all about where he mates. Hormones have to adapt to the unique demands of an animal's world. That takes some kinky hormones. One creature plays games with his gonads. Here are the rules. There's only one male who can act like a male. And you can't be a female unless you're a male first. Confused? Good thing you're not a clownfish. The coral reef is a treacherous place to live. There are perils around every corner, and there are plenty of corners. The lionfish is well named. He's on the prowl. But the clownfish, his life is no circus. He's in the arms of death. The tentacles of an anemone are barbed with venomous stingers. The clownfish is immune. So here, he's protected from attack. But there's a downside to living in this fortress. It's also a trap. There's not enough room here for too many offspring. In fact, the colony 
has to keep the partying down to one mating pair. Their solution? Meet Big Mama. There's only one female and only one breeding male. Having only one pair of breeders means they don't risk overpopulating their perch. Once the male fertilizes her clutch of eggs, he's the one who tends to them. The other four sailfish are all non breeders, all smaller and all out of luck. But that's about to change. Whenever it feels like it, the anemone can close up shop. Too bad for anyone left out in the open. That lionfish has suddenly got a tempting catch. Big Mama. Mysterious mix of hormones to the rescue. Each fish comes equipped with the basic ingredients to make either ovaries or testicles. The breeding male knows what's going on, and his senses trigger his glands to stir up his sex hormones. Over the course of a few weeks, a he changes into a she. Breeding male becomes the next big mama. The clownfish is the all-time transgender original. Now the colony's new big mama needs herself a mate. From among the non-breeders, one steps up and bumps up to become larger than the rest. He's in line to take his place as the next ship. Another morphing male, another fleeting female. When the going gets rough, the clownfish transforms. Clownfish are the product of their strange, tight-knit world. Out of the open Everything's different. Male fish are usually the bigger ones. That way, they're better at fighting each other over who gets to make. All males take their cues from what each animal's world demands. They're the chemical engine of adaptation. The switch that triggers the changes of physical survival. Even if that means changing gender. of the sea leaves the choice to the elements. The loggerhead turtle. She can't predict the weather. But can the weather predict a turtle? The answer is yes. spent her life cruising the open ocean. Migrating 12,000 kilometers, the sheer span of the Pacific. But to find a mate, the loggerhead knows just where to go. To the same waters where she was born. Gland in her head, sensitive to changes in light, 
may help point the way. She finally draws to her mating rounds. The loggerhead idea of a singles bar. The male grabs hold and hangs on for the ride. That's as hard as it gets for him. For her, the work's just begun. Now she returns to the very same beach where she was born. She's programmed to lay her eggs here. If traveling the Pacific seems like a long trip, these last 30 meters are a killer. She digs up to five nests a season and lays almost 16 kilos of eggs. Every kilo a heartbreaker. Where, when and how is up to her. But there's an important decision that's out of her control. The sex of her kids depends on temperature. If the nest is 26 degrees Celsius or less, the hatchlings go male. 32 or more, they go female. In between, it's a mix of sexes. Temperature cues the amount of testosterone cooking in those shells. That goes for all marine turtles. Some years, one sex is favored over the other. That might help prevent inbreeding. Now the hatchlings make a mad dash for the sea through an obstacle course of predators. again is key. The higher it is during incubation, the greater their stamina. Only one in 300 will make it to adulthood and breed. Whatever triggers an animal's hormones, whether it's the forecast or its glands, they're what give animals the stuff they need to survive no matter the risk. When an animal is hungry, it's got to be up for facing danger. When he's threatened, he has to rise to any challenge. And when it comes to sex, that brings out the daredevil. To win over his chicken of choice, this bad boy, he's a thrill seeker. step for the prairie chicken. Standard stuff for any species. He has to clear the other contenders from the dance floor. Next, he turns on the charm. A sock. A little soft shoe. 
His mating display could last for hours. What keeps him going? The longer daylight hours cue a surge of testosterone in him and estrogen in her. Prairie chicken paradise. But for the male, asking for attention has its risks. Tempting fate like that be the way to go for a male prairie chicken. It could actually be a turn on for the hen. His daredevilry could be a sure sign of his prowess. He must have good genes to survive such a high stakes life. No risk, no reward. That's the male motto. And most females? The build-up to sex is a spectator sport. They watch from the sidelines. Unless they get caught up in the action. Males are not the only ones whose hormones put them in harm's way. Take this ferocious female. You've heard of tough love? This is quite love. There are three things Australia's koala likes to eat. Eucalyptus, eucalyptus, and more eucalyptus. It's a losing proposition. Eucalyptus doesn't provide much energy, but it sure takes a lot to digest. So the koala doesn't have much get up and go for any going and getting up. Not for most of the year. That changes come breeding time. At least it does for the male. He stakes out his territory by smearing his scent from a gland on his chest. His hormones trigger a not-so-subtle cologne of 40 or so different compounds. There is chemical stamp, telling the world his age and his status. The female, unimpressed. He serenades. Needs a set of antlers or fancy dance moves when you can sing like a rock star. The more sex will know he's stoked with, the deeper and better, the more impressive he seems. The female? Still playing hard to get. The harder he has to try. He beats off his rivals, proving his prowess. The female? What else is there? When all else fails, time to pull out the stops. 
the koala is a real Romeo. Or is it just oversexed? It takes his hormonal assault to trigger one in her. It could be that the female is so stingy with her energy, she won't even produce an egg, unless she has to. It's not until the act of sex that her luteinizing hormone kicks in. And finally, release an egg for fertilizing. It's a great way to conserve energy for an animal with not much to spare. One would be Casanova, one won't be. Not if she can help it. Romance, Kwana style. Hard to warm up an animal who takes sex to the Kwana's extreme. But then the ultimate moody beast is the kamikaze of Coitus. He's not even a year old, but he's already on death's door. A month ago, he was a virgin. Now he's having sex 14 hours a day. So frantically that his body is disintegrating. But he can't stop. The Australian bush is alive with insects to eat. Life sure looks good for a young Antichinus. He's busy stocking up on his most important contribution to the world. Sperm. The Antichinus is not a mouse, but when it comes to sex, he's an animal. Mating season triggers a rush of testosterone. It's time to chase a tail. But he's not alone. Every male is competing for the same thing. Mating season for the Antichinus is like a sale before Christmas. Don't block the aisle. To win out, a male has to go into overdrive. He finds a mate. And another. And another. Sex could last up to 14 hours at a stretch. That's his best hope of making sure his sperm wins out. His body is exploding with hormones. But they're not all the happy ending kind. As his system rages with testosterone, it's also reacting to the stress hormone, cortisol. He is literally doing himself to death. After two weeks of non-stop glory, every male in the colony is falling apart, literally. They're bleeding. They've stopped eating and sleeping. Their immune system is shot. They still want to have sex. The Antichinus goes out with a bang. The poison that did him in. Ironically, the ultimate key to survival. The secret to every species success is the very elixir of life.